Keep bugging. So when you go to use the debugger, you, you can do this either with the code or without the code. When you're developing, one of the options that you have is compile with uh, debug information, which will then help you uh, to actually, when you're running it, um, track down things like you know crashes. Um, one of the things that you can answer with reverse engineering is why is my program crashing or where is it crashing? Um, when when we talk about debuggers, we're talking about actually running the thing that you're trying to analyze. So this is one of those things where you definitely want a, a good sandbox environment if you're doing this with malware or something that you're not sure what it is that it's doing. The basic idea with debugging is you run it and you can tell the debugger either stop on particular conditions um, or stop on particular lines of code. If you have the source code and you're using like Visual Studio, you can actually say, okay, this you know C++ line of code, I want you to, it's called a breakpoint, I want you to break here when you reach this, come up and, and then I can um, do a, a deep dive analysis of what exactly is happening with uh, the user input, network input, or whatnot. When we're talking about assembly, uh, we're talking the, the assembly kind of line of code, the line of assembly you can actually put breakpoints on. And there are two different types of breakpoints, software breakpoints and hardware breakpoints. One of them is the debugger actually making a change in memory, actually on the line where you want it to do the break, it inserts a, um, it's a CC, it's an int 3, and that it causes an interrupt that if there is a debugger attached, it will cause the debugger to go, oh, I received an interrupt. Let me stop and show the user this is where we are in the code. I received an interrupt, and the user can choose to continue, um, just let it continue to run, or actually uh, step through it themselves. Uh, another way to do it is with hardware breakpoints, where their actual hardware registers in the, the CPU, and this is architecture specific, exactly how many you have. Um, there are hardware registers in the CPU that you can say, okay, I want to break when you get to this particular instruction or when this particular location in memory is accessed. It does not make any changes to the actual code itself. The differences between these are going to um, lend themselves to how you, how you want to use them. If you're doing malware analysis, especially something that is packed and you're trying to unpack it, Hardware breakpoints are definitely the way to go because if it's self-modifying code, then um, what you're going to do with software breakpoint is you're actually modifying the code in order to add that int three. And when the int three is reached, the debugger goes, "Okay, um, there was a breakpoint that I had added there. Let me remove that int three and put the actual instruction back in, and then show it to the user where we are." Whereas with the hardware breakpoint, no, doesn't change the code at all. Thing about the hardware breakpoints, though, is those could be changed by the program. So just just be aware that um, the malware could uh, detect that it's being debugged. Another way that uh, malware can be kind of funky, and I won't dive too far down this, but just an FYI, um, malware could have a bunch of int three instruction in its code that causes interrupts, but doesn't actually like do anything when it's normally running, but if there's a debugger attached, every single one of those interrupts, the debugger is going to stop. So if you're trying to run through the code and they have an int three in a loop that they're running through while they're doing other stuff, it's gonna make the debugger stop each and every time that can get annoying. And there are certain ways uh, around that that we'll go into in the next class if you take that one. So what we're going to be doing in this class is we're going to be using IDA as a debugger. It has a debugging feature where you can actually run the code 
and uh, be able to set breakpoints and step through it. And I'll go when I say step through it, I'll, I'll go into what that means if you're not aware. There's also a program called Ollie Debug that if you're doing malware analysis is um, a, you could use Ida, but Ollie Debug has some additional features in it with its plugin architecture. Um, it's a really good tool. A big thing that Ollie Debug has is a plugin that allows you to dump a process um, back to disk in a Windows PE format. So if you go through malware that is packed and you unpack it in memory, you can then use that, that Ollie Dump plugin to dump it back to disk. And now you have a unpacked code, potentially. So I just figured that was worth worth mentioning. Um, it's included in the tools if you wanted to uh, play around with that at some point. But what we're going to be using here is, is Ida. All right. So let's do that. Let's use Ida. So let's say we're in our bomb lab here. And we are looking at this thing. Let's go, actually, let's take a look at phase three. So I'm in Ida. I got the bomb lab open. And I'm taking a look at it. And I reach this phase three. And I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. I see the scan app. And I see this thing here. And I'm like, oh, I think this is a case, but I'm not quite sure how to deal with this up here. Something you can do is, okay, I know that it needs to be you know, less than seven, or maybe I don't. Maybe, maybe I just you know I understand what's going on up to like here. I can set a breakpoint here. Going up to debugger, breakpoints, add breakpoint. Oh, yeah, or you could just right click it. That's an easier way to do it. <laughs> There's more than one way to do it. Um, and do, uh, well, let me delete it first. And I, I'd say add, uh, add breakpoint here, or you can press F2. There's more than one way to do it. Um, Debugger menu for right clicking. So okay, so I set a breakpoint there. So now I want to run this thing. There's a couple of different ways that we could run it. We could either go up to debugger, start process, but then it's going to ask us for our, are you sure you want to continue? Running, you know, debugging means you'll actually run it. It is nice and gives us this warning here. Hey, careful with viruses. Blah. Yes. And we're given this interface, which is uh, weird. It, um, yeah. It, it, because of this, it messed up a little. So you get this piece at the top, changed our, our interface. Um, the free version of Ida, this is one of the things that it um, you just kind of have to deal with, these, these separate windows here. Um, I usually move them around, get the, get the disassembly over here, large, and the, uh, what the? What was that? Threads, I don't usually need. Registers is good. And here we go. So we have our window here. Um, registers. Usually we also want to see the stack. View, subviews. Where is that going to be? Or is it debugger? Let me let me cancel this. I think with the the magnifier up here, it got a little off. Yes, start process. Yes, just went back to what it was. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna have to double check how to get the uh, with the free version how to get the uh, stack over here. Um, what this did to start with is it it ran the program. So we get our our window here that pops up. It's in a, a little command prompt and it says, "Welcome to my Phoenix little bomb." So in here we could say, "Okay." What's the, what's the answer to the first phase? So we can get to the phase that we actually uh, care about where we set the breakpoint. What is that? Public speaking is very easy. Public speaking is very easy. Period. Period. Yay. What's the second one? One, two, six, three, four, one, four, seven, one. One, twenty. <coughs> Yay. And then... What was this one? Three. Oh, there we go. We hit our break point. You know, because it's purple instead of red. So we hit our break point here. It came back from the CNF. We can see that our if we hover over a variable, it'll actually show you the, the value there in memory. If you uh, have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you can actually scroll down to show more memory around it. Um, you can double click to go to that memory location, escape to go back. Um, over here, we have our registers. I'm showing us the values in them. If uh, I is nice enough where if what's in a register, it looks like it's, it's, it's a pointer to something, it'll actually uh, show it over here, um, like this looks like it's a pointer to the dot data um, destination um, variable. This looks like it's a pointer to phase three line assembly line twenty eight. So that's useful. So here we can see that okay we have. We have our uh, let's see where are we? Yeah. Okay, this is what I was looking for. So this is what we had entered in. There's a three, which is a in hex is, is 33. That is the ASCII equivalent of the number 3. 20 is the ASCII equivalent of a space. K, see I was nice enough to recognize it and put it in a comment here. K space 251 with a null terminating. We can go back, back. So we see that's, that's what we had put in. And so we're down here and so we want to see, okay, I know scanf, it returns the number of right in, so I really don't care about this. So I want to skip over that, but I want to get down here. So I could add another breakpoint down here and then run again, or we can do this stepping. And what that means is moving on to executing the current instruction, moving on to the next one. And there's two different types of stepping. You can step uh, through or over or you can step into. Um, that only matters when you reach a uh, call. Um, stepping over means step over the call, do, do the whole like call, go down there and return and just bring me to the next instruction after the call. That's stepping over. Or stepping into means actually execute the call and then show me the bring me to the first instruction, assembly instruction within that function that's being called. So those are just the, the two different types to be aware of. Um, in here it's step into or step over F7 or F8. And what we would do is say, okay, I just want to execute the current instruction, I do F7 and execute it and see it moved on to the next one. The current instruction is that it will execute next. It's highlighted in blue. Throughout that move, compare, jump greater than equal. 
This is a nice feature of Ida where if you're on a conditional jump and it's about to be to be executed, it will actually um, see that it's blink it's it's making blink the path that uh, it believes will be taken next. Um, so it's taking a look at that conditional jump and going, okay, when that is evaluated, this is where we're going to go next. All right. Step over that, and we're in this mode. So here we can see, okay, I'm grabbing var d plus one and moving that into ECX. Well, let's see what, what happens. It grabs it, and now in ECX, we see over here the value of three. So we didn't have to even go up and say, okay, what's var d again? Okay, what's var d plus one? We just execute it, and we get the value, and look, that's what it is. And we see this is being ECX is being moved into the first num var, uh, variable. Does the compare? You actually can uh, see the flags that are over here on the side, and the ones that are blue are the ones that um, changed with the most recent instruction. The ones in black are the ones that did not change. And so you can actually see what flags got changed based off of that compare. And see, Ida is saying, oh, okay, well, I'm going to jump down this uh, path next. If we, if we didn't know what the answer was and we just had put in like some number there, and we got down here and we went, oh, it's comparing with seven. I had put in 42, and it would go down this way. Okay, now I know it needs to be like less than seven, so in order to make it go down this way. So now we're going down this way, and I'm going to, there we go, F7 again. And we do our move. So this is where we see the move into EDX of that value that we had put in first, that three, and we see this, uh, Right here, it's saying Ida is evaluating this offset EDX times four and saying, hey, it's, it's that value right there, that offset. Um, let me increase this. Oh, did that not work? No. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, it's that offset to what we labeled is three, because we know what that is now. And it's telling us, and you can even see with this blink thing line, that's where I'm going next. So if I F7 again, it brings us down here, and see that move into there. We see the compare, F7, F7. It says we're gonna jump around it because we had put in the right number. This is just a way of trying to figure out you know, what, what, what else is going on by putting in, giving it some input, and seeing how that input is actually treated. Uh, if you're having trouble following it, uh, the code just statically, this can be a way of figuring out, OK, what exactly is happening to the input that I'm providing. F7, F7, see that compare. ECX, with EAX, you can even see over here, ECX, with EAX, jump zero, there, we'll move around. Yay. Does anybody have any questions on your basic debugging? Is there a way to use, to define inputs, like, File as an input so you don't Yes, yep, absolutely. So, um, oh. hold on a sec. Huh. 
Okay, Jared, I'll, I'll get back with you um, in a little bit. We're gonna, what I'm gonna have you guys do is actually some hands-on with the debugger so you get some experience yourself with um, try stepping through phase four. And in order to use your input file, what you would do is, let me stop this. You can stop your, your terminate current debugging by going over to the upper left and clicking on this terminate. Uh, the, the stop button there, the, the, the black square. It'll bring you back to your interface here. Um, so setting up arguments to the file that you're going to run will be under the debugger menu, process options, and right down here, parameters. And you can provide it with the path to the file that you want it to open, like for, for instance, um, my path would be here. So I would do, so I'd want to copy that. Slash answers dot text, but I think I have to put that in quotes because it's got spaces in it. So now if I say OK, and if I debug start process, yes, it will, yep, it will go right to the breakpoint because it got all the answers to the previous one. So just to, to go over that again so everybody knows. To give the process that you're going to debug a command line argument, you go up to debugger, process options, and under parameters, you'll give what you would put as, as the arguments, um, space uh, delimited, just like on the command line, anything with uh, argument with spaces in it, you'll have to put quotes around. If you moved your um, IDB, oh, so the, the problem you might be running into, um, Jared, and anyone else, if you moved your IDB file out of the same directory that the bomb.ex underscore file was, or you moved your bomb.ex underscore into a different directory than your IDB is, what the uh, what this is saying up here is what is the application that you actually want me to run? So by default, it's going to fill in wherever your bomb.ex.ex underscore was when you first created the IDB. So if you moved that file, you're going to have to uh, put in the correct path here, or just move the file back. So what I want you to do is we can, I'll remove this, um, go to your uh, phase, go to phase four, um, go ahead and set a, set a breakpoint, make sure that you know how to, how to step into, set a breakpoint here on that call to phase four, add breakpoint, uh, and set up your parameter to use your answers file, and then go ahead and run it. Oh, I didn't put, well, I guess I didn't put my, uh, there we go. So like that. So the, the idea with this is I just want to give you guys some hands-on with using the debugger and how to step into versus step over. Remember those shortcuts, F7, F8, into versus over.
extra bomb or anything else. Oh, there it is. Ah, uh, yeah, I don't know what happened. Blame VMware. I don't know. Okay, I'll just click that. <laughs> yeah, where's the help? There we Sitting here, I'm looking at phase five, which I, I paint. Um, I blame my care calendar for sleep. And um, I have a call here, right? And there's all this other junk flying around. Why isn't this just rendering one big graph? Like, is there something special that, that or does it just say, oh, this graph is big, I'm going to break this into pieces? Say that? Why isn't it? So it's, here's other stuff. Yeah. Right. One would it would stand to reason that all of this stuff should be rendered in the same big graph along with all of this stuff. Well, oh um, no, because it's a different function. Like it's a different block of code. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not looking at the addresses, and therefore I can guess that. Got it. Okay. Well, so what what this what this view does is it shows you this is what your current function scope would look like. Got it. So this is everything that is just within the scope of this particular function that you're looking at. It's not going to show you things that um, are in, yeah, are in like all right. It's not very good. Well, well that would be interesting to add to be able to say also including this graph. Right, all this other shit. This, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that doesn't exist as far as I know. I've also noticed trying to add watches in doesn't work from one depot to the next. So like I try to, I want to watch a data structure from one depot to the next and it doesn't seem to track things. It'll just look at it, it'll just say, I want to look at this blob of stuff in memory. Because from one, one time I run it to the next time, the, I think that the uh, addresses are changing. You know, I'd like to be able to have a blob of text in Phase five that has giants in it. Yeah, I won't watch that, but it doesn't persist. Oh, I see what you mean. Right, it's just watching a static uh, uh, memory location that apparently changes or something. Because it's a. You may be looking at a local variable versus a global. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so let's wrap up for the day. You're welcome to stay past the wrap up if you want to play around with debugging some more, or if you want to play around with some of the phases if you were having trouble with them. I'm going to be staying here late, so so I'll be around if you want to ask questions. Let's just do a uh, quick recap of what we went over. Two days. Let's see.